Today's episode is brought to you by privacy.com. Head on over to privacy.com slash rogue and get $5 off the first anything you purchase. Anything at all. Purchase me. Purchase privacy. Don't buy him. <laughs> There's no exchange. You can't take it back. I've tried. You think Mr. Pibb just never really applied himself? Never went to Cola graduate school, never went to Cola PhD school. He's super sensitive about that, but he's got that boat dealership now and it's going really well. Yeah, I know, he's really excited. And by the way, uh, Dr. B. Not even a licensed doctor. <laughs> yeah. Dr. B has a lot of like, those salt stones that you plug in in his office. <laughs> salt stones? He does the electric like clicky thing. Yeah, <laughs> every time you go in there, he's telling you about something he read on Goop. <laughs> Dr. B got his degree from Goop. Holy cow, we're finally doing one of those things that everybody asked for forever. We're gonna learn to distill with Jesse Wilson all the way from New Zealand from, is it Still It? Yeah, find Still It on YouTube, you'll find me. I is this something that can kill us? Yes. Uh, Sorry. With <laughs> that, was, that, was, that was like a Tourette's moment. <laughs> I've watched your channel. Yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so, that's probably all uh, evergreen answer there. Yeah. So originally we were gonna distill actual spirits, like the, the basics of whiskey and so on. Yeah. But it turns out Texas a little bit illegal. Federally illegal. Since prohibition, yeah. uh, making bathtub booze, it will get you locked away. Yeah. You can make beer. You can make wine. You can make mead. Yep. Try and run that stuff through a still. You guys got a problem. Okay, so in one reality, we would be taking a wort or a beer, uh, yeah. some kind of fermented liquid. Theoretically, yep. imagine the Pruno episode ended, and then we're right here. Now we're distilling the alcohol out of the Pruno, but oh, we can't do that, right? So, yeah. so absent that, we figured what we would do is distill the water out of a bunch of Dr. Peppers. Yeah. Will it still taste like Dr. Pepper? You are so far out of my wheelhouse. <laughs> I, I thought I was coming here to film a reasonable episode <laughs> for educational purposes, yes. something that people could use for survival, and now we're gonna mess around with this stuff. <laughs> yeah, it's like, I mean, what the hell? <laughs> okay, so walk us through the steps, and we can check in on what the difference is to distill water versus distilling alcohol. I would guess that there'll be no flavor in the water. I'm, I'm guessing there's gonna be some flavor. So the first thing we need is what distillers will call a boiler, something to house the liquid to heat and to start evaporating and boiling in. So we put, fill, fill, fill we this up? Yeah, just yeah, yeah. Fill the pot just with Dr. Pepper? Yeah. yeah. We're, we're gonna mess with this lid a little bit later on, so maybe pop that over this side. Uh, this, we can fill up with Dr. Pepper. Yeah. How long have you been doing this now? Uh, I've been doing it for two years now. So you've been doing it for two, oh, years. two years. This is uh, a passion of yours, right? Oh yeah. And then you have these two idiots from America that said, yeah, but Dr. Pepper. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, I'm thinking that's probably enough, guys. Okay, so we're about half full yeah. right now with Dr. Pepper. And we do have a secret ingredient there. It's up to you guys if you want to keep this or not. What is it? The Walmart receipt. Leave it in there. Leave, Leave it, it in there. there. Yeah, 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 let's do it. You okay. can taste the, the deductions. <laughs> <laughs> want to have a guess at what would happen if we actually boiled this right now? We would just boil down a syrup, right? Yeah, but there's a whole lot of CO2 in there. Oh. Oomph. Oh, really? As it heats up, yeah. So I'm thinking it's probably smart for us to degas this now. Okay. Which is a totally legitimate thing, even when you're making spirits. I, okay. The first thing I've got for you is number eight wire. There's a running joke in New Zealand that anything that breaks in New Zealand, you can fix with this stuff. Okay. You've got him around, so you probably need to fix some stuff. Okay. Right? Yeah, we'll make, a, we'll make a stirring stick out yeah. of it. It proves its point already. Uh, there you go. So how, how do you, uh, computer, make? <laughs> make stirring <laughs> stick. So you want me to stir this? Stir like mad. Yeah, you, you, want, you want to get the bubbles out. Oh, yeah, you're yeah, intentionally yeah, yeah. Yeah, frothing it. Yeah, 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 yeah. There now you go. Degassing. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Yo, now I made I'm you an <laughs> whisk. Look at that. Mmm. There you go. Go nuts, go nuts. Oh, well, look at this. Yeah. Mmm, yeah. Degassed. The receipt is, is almost there. <laughs> <laughs> it's getting real good. Wait, no, no, we don't put Vegemite. What are you doing? What's, that's not Vegemite. Have you guys had this? No, I, I, I don't know. It's more foreign stuff. <laughs> Marmite. This is yeast extract, oh, essentially. Okay. Oh, okay. So it's the same as Vegemite. Yeah. But that's from Australia and that's insulting to okay, Kiwis. So it. we don't do that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Can we at least light the fire? I think that's going to be super gross. Oh, it is no, super gross. It's delicious. You just you have to understand. Yeah, how, no, don't do that. Yeah, it's fine. I don't know. It's like soy sauce. <laughs> mm. 
It's like gelatinous burnt mm. toast. All right, so the next thing we need, need to do is actually build the top of the still. So I assume our goal is we want to boil stuff and have something come out. We, we have to, what, drill a hole in this? Exactly. It's the vapor that we want. It's the there. vapor we want. Because that'll be the pure water. Or if we were distilling spirits, there's a different temperature that alcohol boils off at from water, right? No, it, it's a gradient for the, the percentage of alcohol that's coming out. Got it. So you might start at, you know, 75 degrees. Oh, sorry, I can't convert. It's, it's fine, it's up fine. Here. <laughs> it'll, be, it'll be converted. Yeah, uh, through to, you know, up to 100 degrees when all the alcohol runs out, and then you're just boiling water. Got it. Regardless, we want to be able to capture the stuff Correct. that comes out. Okay, yeah, yeah. so uh, what, we drill a hole? Yep, we want to drill a hole. But it has to fit that. It has yeah. to be that size. So this copper tubing is what we're going to use to transport the vapor from A to B. Okay. Maybe I'll do a tiny one for or do you think yeah, we could just go straight that. in? Yeah. Does it matter where on this we do it? No, for what we're doing, I would, that's about perfect. Right, so we'll yep. be taking yep. this. <laughs> yep. <laughs> right, oh dear. Is this some of uh, your crazy New Zealand metal? <laughs> they have over there? This is 100% genuine American Walmart metal. Oh, well, yeah. That explains it. Wow! <laughs> Probably use the wrong kind of bit. Yeah! Mm -hmm. We got thermite like right there. If you <laughs> burn a hole. So how perfect of a seal do you need? Oh, that looks pretty good. That's yeah. Actually really good. <laughs> That's perfect. So it, it, it needs to be airtight. Yeah. Or vapor tight. If this was alcohol that we were distilling, yep. then it's a little bit of a safety concern having very flammable gases mm. leaking out all over the place, right? Oh, sure. So there's that part to it, but there's also efficiency. You don't want to be doing all this hard work and then half of your products just disappearing off into the atmosphere. Right. right. Now, the whole reason that we're using the copper tubing, this is where it goes like in a spiral or something. Yes. This yeah. is to maximize the surface area so that it cools down, like it goes up as a vapor, then cools down in the coils, and then drips out? That's our next step, yeah. And the reason we're using this is because it's pre-annealed, which means that it's been heat treated to be flexible. So it's soft. I wouldn't make a still out of this stuff normally, but for, for our purpose today, it's great because we can work with it. And when we get to making the condenser, we can just literally yeah. do this. Yeah. Okay, so we do need to seal that up. How do we seal this? We need to seal that up. And because we're kind of working janky, you could TIG weld it, you could braze it, you could solder it. We're not gonna do that today. Okay. What we have here is PTFE tape. We call it Teflon tape here in the US. That's what it's made of, yeah. and that's the reason that distillers like it. If yep. you were making alcohol, you wanna be very selective about the materials you use. Right. Because it's a solvent, alcohol's a solvent. So if you use something that has even silicon that has things in it that you wouldn't want to be putting into your body. It'll, it'll melt and get in there. And... It'll strip it right out and you'll end up drinking it. Now, none of this is pressurized, right? We don't no, have to worry about that. No, 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 okay. no, okay. Any pressure whatsoever is the enemy of safe distilling because if you build pressure up, eventually it's going to escape somewhere, right? Got it. Boom. But... And then we go back to the flammable stuff. Boom. Got it. Boom. It can get out of hand really quick. <laughs> Wrong, really quick, yeah. So what do we wrap this around yeah. here? Essentially, we're going to make kind of like a cone Mm -hmm. And then we're just going to pressure fit it in. Got it, and it'll yeah. seal the top. But because you guys have drilled such a, a, a close fit hole, almost don't need this at all. Oh, that's great. Look at that, we did something right for a change. Hey. I'm very impressed. <laughs> <laughs> like, there a... I'm sorry, I thought I was going to be on the modern road. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a Brian and Jason did something right counter? <laughs> <laughs> it goes all the way back to episode one. <laughs> it counts up to this moment. Yeah. <laughs> I'm thinking that's probably pretty good. Okay, and so it's okay for us to just push it in enough that this all mushes up on there, right? Yeah, you're trying to cram it up. Yeah, here, uh, we could twist the wheel on this. Yep. There we go. Just twist, twist, get it all shoved up. Yeah, and it, it'll nice. almost bunch up yeah. like it does on a thread. Easy. So that is essentially our boiler fixed. Okay. We're, gonna, we're gonna have to obviously seal the lid to the to the pot Oh, so well. it's not just enough to have the pressure of it down. We need to actually lock it on. I mean, once again, because we're not doing alcohol, we can play loose, fine. but if this was alcohol, you would want a perfect seal. Yeah. So yeah, you can pop that on top, and uh, actually, it's probably probably going to work pretty well if we just come off the side over here. Oh, right on. Okay, look at that. That's two things we did right. Yeah. And you guys this are all is over just this. just for the weight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're going to want something hefty on there just to hold that, it there for. That's now. all the flowers for. <laughs> <laughs> 
I gave you very specific instructions. You did! Flour. Yeah! <laughs> and it's just a weight? Yeah, I mean, we could have used stones, but... <laughs> but I he thought... didn't know that you would get the right stones. Uh, yeah, exactly. So how did you get those flour? Yeah, at least I know that's going to be the right weight. <laughs> okay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay, so... Okay, no, we are actually going to do that. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> So now we've got this sealed to here, we now need to get, create the condenser, which you alluded to earlier, but we also need a way to get the actual product out of the condenser. We need to put another hole in the bottom of that bucket oh. to poke this through. Now, I would have thought that just air cooling would be enough, but you're talking about actually filling this with water so that, again, we have a maximum temperature differential, right? Yeah, and also thermal mass. Sure. Like a heat sink. It's, it's basically like, this That's is exactly all hot. We're you want something, we're making a big heat, heat exactly. sink. Exactly. Okay, if this is going to be filled with water, we don't want it all draining out the bottom. No. So once again, we were going with janky. So okay. I was just going to do it with this again. And okay. it was going to leak a little bit. Okay. Great. What do you think? Like right here? A couple uh, yeah, there it is. It's fine to have a, a column sticking up this way. But once you reach the highest point, you want everything to be downhill. You okay. don't want you don't want anything pulling. Yeah, so oh, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So we can do this, and you're gonna have to kind of wrangle this into shape. Sure, so. sure. So this guy, we don't want to go uphill. No uphill. No uphill. No uphill. I think that's perfect. Do we like that? Yep, that's what, gonna work well. What kind of problems would it cause if you had the water collecting and pooling? What does that do? This is more for the alcohol side of things. Okay. You know how we talked about that gradient mm -hmm. of temperature that comes off. There's also a gradient of flavors. So you want to maintain precision so that you could get the exact same flavor every yes, single brew. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. It's called pooling. And so if you have, like even if it was more pronounced, so if this went back up, you'd have liquid sitting here and it would smear the different flavors from different parts of the run and you can't be precise to decide what flavors you want and what you don't want. Got okay. it. There's also the potential that it could create a, pr a pressure sort of feedback back into the pot. Oh. I mean, for so, this, so, it's not going to be a problem. OK. Yeah. Everything from safety to flavor. 100%. OK. If you, um. Yep, yep, yep. It's fine. It's fine. Here. I'm just going to keep <laughs> on going. Got it. Yeah. And you're going to want to jam that in really tight. Oh, no, it's sliding on this. I think we're good. Essentially, we're done. What? You just essentially built a still. Really? Yeah. That's awesome. Now, I mean, this are, is super simple. Yeah, there are no missing hardware parts to, if we were going to actually distill alcohol, for instance. That's it. This is now a functioning still once we oh, get the water wow. in there. Yeah. And of course, you need a heat source. So fire, gas, electric. I mean, there's a thousand different ways to do it. I expected and... way more Erlenmeyer flasks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I really did. Yeah. I guess we fill it with Dr. Pepper to cool it. <laughs> I mean, it's the only rational solution, Brian. <laughs> Are we making like basically a paper mache paste or something? Yeah, so we're essentially making kind of uh, slightly runnier than pizza dough. I gotta go with 1.0. <laughs> Dude, it's about to be one of those sugar rockets. Yeah, we need heaps more than that. Oh, really? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. OK, what if we use potassium nitrate? Just, just hypothetically. Just hypothetically. That's probably good. So once again, the reason we're using flour, I'm thinking of how I would do it. We know that everything in this is food safe. Got you it. can cook it. It's still food safe. Uh, and the other thing is, when we put it on here and this starts to heat up, that's essentially going to bake into a really crappy bread. Ooh, that's and great. Harden. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -mm. Uh, nom, 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 nom. <laughs> I knew I could count on you for that. <laughs> okay, so this is just a glue. We're just making a, we're a making glue. food safe glue. So do we start pushing it onto this? Yeah, so we're going to want something heavy to put on there to make sure it doesn't... Uh... Oh, I've got this flour. <laughs> and we're just going to kind of smear this around everywhere where vapor might leak out, or in my case, alcohol might leak out. Oh, I like what you've done up here. Hey, hey. I just got to plot it from you've teacher. You've gooped before. <laughs> Oh, you got noticed by Senpai for your gooping. <laughs> so the other good thing about this stuff is if you don't get it 100% the first time, you're going to no notice a little leak and you can just apply more on it. Oh, you can do it in process. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. So at yeah. this point, should we go ahead and fire it up? I think we're good. Okay. Yeah. We have glasses. Yeah. Yeah, like perfect. So? perfect. Uh, yeah. Now, if we do get flavor coming through, uh -huh. there's a very good chance that we might get 
different types of flavor coming off at different times in the run. Ooh. So we could essentially reverse engineer the Dr. Pepper secret re what? recipe. What? When I went to a distillery, it was the weirdest thing because they just had this this funnel going and then they would they would walk over and they go, uh, that's that's the job of the distiller yeah. is every yeah. so often go, eh. I want to be a Dr. Pepper distiller. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, there we go. Okay. Hey. We're lit. So essentially now all we're doing is waiting for this to boil. Cool. But because these different chemicals mixed in together, it's going to boil at different temperatures. But at some point, it's going to hit the temperature that just water is coming out. When you add alcohol to water, the boiling point gets lower. Okay. But we've added sugar to water, or Dr. Pepper did for us. Right. And the boiling point gets higher. So this is going to boil hotter than water would. And I'm t I, your guess is as good as mine, man. Now, in a wilderness scenario, whatever comes out, no matter how it tastes, we can assume is safe because it's all been boiled and uh, captured as it came up. If it was water. It, you know, if, yeah. you, if you took dirty pond water, if you took river water, those sort of things, yes. And as we talked about before, that won't get rid of like uh, heavy metals or anything, but it will do all of the living critters. Yeah, it'll get rid of all of your particulates and all of that. That, of course, will remain in here. Uh, and if it boils, it'll boil off all of your uh, microscopic organisms and everything like Giardia and what have you. From what I understand, it's actually pretty good for heavy metals as well. Because the heavy metals will stay behind. Yeah. Oh, that's for the most part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just made the same <laughs> mistake. Yeah. What you could do is d do this four or five times. Okay. Take all the stuff that you've distilled, throw this stuff out. Yep. Put Start the distilled water again. back in mm -hmm. and run again. Because essentially what we've made is a really inefficient pot still. How much do you lose of what's going in versus what's coming out on average? For alcohol? Yeah. So if I, do, I make 100 liters, which is uh, half of an oil drum, between two and five liters of actual finished product at about 60%. Start. Really? Yeah, so you're looking at sort of two to five percent of what you started with. Wow, I didn't expect the ratio, uh, the loss ratio to be that dramatic. Uh oh. Yep, we got a leak. It's taking a long time to heat up. You'll hear it. Like a, you know, like a, oh, I was gonna say like a jug that's almost boiling, but you don't know what I'm talking about. Nope, do you? nope. Nope. A soup pot that's almost boiling. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we're gonna get the crackly sound, and then it's gonna start going quiet, and then things are gonna start happening. Do we have paper towels or uh, it's doing the leaky thing? At this point, we're leaking, but at least this part is not gonna be contaminated. <laughs> I can't see at all why this would have been illegal. <laughs> <laughs> Generally, you would not do it janky. You know, if you're gonna do it, do it properly. But this is the, the modern rogue. I, <laughs> yeah. I know, yeah. And it's also the absolute bare minimum. So if you were in a survival situation and you were scavenging parts. Yeah, this is kind of what it would look happen. like, yeah. yeah. You came across the Dr. Pepper factory. Yeah. If we were doing this and you put 8% to 10%, ABV, like a you know a strong beer. We would here. already be having the alcohol. Oh, it would have been happening out. ages ago. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, so it's going to be hot water coming out of that. No, it, it should be cold water. We want okay. cold water down the bottom. All right. Yeah, which is why we've got all of this. So it'll be a temperature gradient. Like you can feel it now. Like have a feel here. Yeah. Like careful because it's getting quite hot. Oh, it sure is. Yeah. But down there, it's really cold. Wow, what a difference. Yeah, it's bonkers, right? Is the length of this important? The length of it is important for the cooling power. Oh, wow. The surface area that it goes past, right? right. Yeah. Okay, so we're still dripping from the gross water. Yeah. So this is, this is an important point because if this was something we were disinfecting, that would be catastrophic to have even a little bit of the nasty water yeah. of in the, the healthy nuclear, water. lead water. Yeah. Or, and, you know, micro infested, yeah. Especially in a uh, survival situation, you got to make sure that your seals are right. Yeah. Yep, well, so yep, yep, yep. Or, or you just you separate the two, you know. Uh, yeah. So at this point, we can be reasonably certain that our gross water is not what's coming out here. Yeah. I think it's really close. Oh, here we go. What? That's happening. What? Hey. That's like real water. <laughs> So it's almost like an equilibrium. It sort of finds its place. It'll keep getting hotter and hotter, right? So this, this stuff down here is not as hot as it's gonna get. Right. And we're pushing vapor out. The harder you boil it, the more vapor you're pushing off per minute or second. You need more cooling power to knock that vapor back I down see. again. So we'll slow it down. There's only so much cooling ability we have. We've made a pot still, right? Yep. If you're making gin or vodka or anything like that, you're talking reflux stills. That's a totally different thing. Okay. But with a pot still, 
the way you manage your still is by heat. So you look at how much, like the, the flow rate coming off the spout, and you put more wood on the fire or less wood on the fire, or you turn the gas up, you turn the gas down. That's the, the skill in the operation of the still. Got it. I'm really confused as to why oh, there's not wait, more coming there out. It is. There, there it is. It. Right as I said it. <laughs> That's amazing. So I'm gonna guess that it's, oh wow, that's really coming out now. Yeah. Is that usually how it works? Is it? In spurts? Yeah. On my setup, no. What we've probably got is somewhere that's uh, pooling a little bit. So probably like right here. Yep. It might be sitting. So it'll condense to there. And then a, a tiny amount of pressure will build up just enough to push it through. Yep. And then we get a spurt, yeah. This one right here is down below Oh, you're this. right, yeah. In New Zealand, do the coils have to go the other way? Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, there Yay. we go. It might be just expectations, but that glass smells like weapons grade Dr. Pepper. <laughs> it does, doesn't it? Yeah. So we identified a couple of culprits, the uphillness on the coil and then a few spots that aren't sealed. I think we need something that's tipping. Oh. It, it keeps breaking the seal because it's, oh, well, it's moving. Oh, so okay. we need something else heavy yeah, on we top? Need something here. Oh, we've actually got quite a lot. Yeah. We? I mean, you can switch the glass out and just have a taste right now if you want. Which is, honestly, if I was distilling something, that's what I'd be doing. I'd be tasting the whole way through. All right. Okay. <sighs> All right. Stage one. Pepper. Oh my water. gosh. We can start with the nose on this thing. <laughs> Check that out. Oh wow. It's <laughs> concentrated Dr. Pepper. It's delicious. It smells super concentrated. Mm hmm Tastes like 99% water with oh. a little bit of. Yeah. There's like a little bit of spice to it, but it does not taste like it smells. It tastes oh, really? almost like just pure water. It smells like Dr. Pepper, but it just tastes like water. Oh, it, it smells like Dr. Pepper tastes. Right? The smell is much more intense than the yeah. taste. It tastes like water with something a little extra. Yeah. So I've been having to think about this and normally what happens is the aromas tend to come off near the beginning mm -hmm. and especially the fruity aromas because they're a lighter compound so they, they boil sooner. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so confused. I don't know what you guys have made me do, but. But here's Whew. what we know. In an emergency scenario, this is safe to drink, right? Oh, it's water, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, final distilled from Dr. Pepper. Pepper water. You can see there's just a little bit of that caramel flavoring, but. How does it smell? Does it still smell delicious? No, it, does, it doesn't smell peppery at all. Oh man, it's gone. I, I think you're right. I think that at different various points, in the, I think that you are an expert. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're now to the pure water part. Distilled water tends to be quite light too. You don't have the mineral content in it. Uh huh. So it sort of melts on your tongue. So all yeah. we had, heat source, a sealed pot with a hole drilled in it, our wart or thing that we want to distill in there, copper tubing. Some kind of this. heat sink for the condenser. Yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, then we drilled a hole in that for us to get our delicious uh, pepper water. I, look at it, it's even more clear now. Each bit comes mm. out more clear than the last. All right, here, thank you for the fresh water. I guess it's the opposite of fresh water. Wow, wow. Kind of warm, slightly peppery. Not bad. You okay? Yeah, I spent uh, I spent about $800 on Fortnite skins last night. Oh so, dear. I I'm mean, sorry, okay, num num number one, never say that out loud again. Second of all- I don't all, even know what Fortnite is, man. If you want plausible deniability, then you've got to start using privacy.com. Oh yeah, and privacy, I can actually set a spending limit on a card. I can say, hey, here's the card, Jason, that you use to buy Fortnite skins. Okay, and it's got a $50 You're limit. Just continuing to say the Fortnite skins thing. I'm trying to look cool here, okay? Yes, that is one of the values use of privacy.com is that you're able to hit one button and it manufactures an individual burner card and yes you can set individual limits to it they protect you with the same standards that your bank is held to it's totally safe and they make good by their name yeah you can keep all of your purchases private they don't sell your information and you can keep your own little spending peccadillos in check 
spending peccadillos in I, check, man. That's, <laughs> that's what I would. That's there. That's the privacy guarantee. Keep your spending peccadillos in check. Also, also do Merriam-Webster.com peccadillos. <laughs> Just check it out. I think I used it right. I'm pretty sure. Privacy.com slash rogue. R-O-G-U-E. Spell it right. Truth time. I played Fortnite like once. And I bought a bunch of skins. Ah, and all of a sudden. And it didn't make me any better. All of your privacy peccadillos were not kept in check. No. They were just. My peccadillos were shown to the world. They exposed all of my delicious peccadillos to the people. No. Everyone has seen my peccadillos. No. Did you get a JPEG? No. Or like a, 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 a GIF and or GIF of my peccadillos sent to you? It's all over Reddit. Check out, check out Jason Murphy's peccadillos. <laughs> So, and so what's in the, oh, oh, that one's yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think that, uh, because you can see it's starting to fall off. That's hot. Yep, you might get it to the point where it's gonna oh, That's hot, again. that's hot. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna get real hot. Yeah, oh. I touched the coil. Stay behind. Yeah, Oh, that's For hot. Yeah, 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 I just made the same mistake, yeah. <laughs>